تواترت الأخبار بأن فاطمة بنت أسد ولدت أمير المؤمنين عليا في جوف الكعب فإنه ولد في يوم الجمعة يوم مثل هذا ثالث عشر من شهر رجب ولم يولد فيها أحد سواه قبله لا قبله ولا بعد No one denies or can deny except you find some of those crazy guys that they are extremists in the, the Wahhabi sect but no one denies that this man was born inside the camp it was on Friday the 13th of Rajab the first day of Ayyam al -Bid. and he was welcomed as a guest as he was born in the sanctuary of the divine. ولدته في حرم الإله وأمنه والبيت حيث فناؤه والمسجد بيضاء طاهرة الثياب كريمة طابت وطاب وليدها والمولد. The birth of beauty and light and purity in Kaaba. أول بيت وضع للناس الذي ببكة مباركا وهدى للعالمين. The center of guidance and blessing. And grace for humanity, للعالمين, universal guidance and blessing. That is Kaaba. It shows that this man was exceptional and extraordinary baby from day number one. ولما وضعته سمته حيدر فاطمة بنت أسد who was very close to the Holy Prophet like a mom she was one of those who migrated a few ladies right after the migration of the Holy Prophet and she had the maximum respect of the Prophet she called this baby حيدر فأتى النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وحمله بيده وسماه عليا. علي ابن التوحيد من أول يوم. On day number one, never any distraction by the idols of the time. Not him, neither him, his mom, Fatima bint Asad. Ibn Abbas, he is one of the greatest companions of the Prophet. There are four qualities for this man that no one else could claim. The first man who ever prayed with the Prophet, the first, first faithful. No one before Ali, no one before this man prayed to God with the Prophet. And he was a standard bearer in the toughest struggles, the one who gets the flag and fight. He is the one who always stood with the Prophet while everybody is escaping. And finally he is the one who buried the body of the Prophet while all of the other companions, they rush to Sadif al to to choose the Khalif. They forgot the body of the Prophet is still there. Let, let us respect this man. He is our Prophet. Let's bury him first. They forgot about this. Only Ali is around to do all the burial. When he is finished, 
he realized that the already the Khalifa was chosen. And he said, at least you could ask me. I mean, I didn't deserve like some consultation at least. That was the beginning of what happened in the history of Islam. Brothers and sisters, there is so much that we can say about this man. As an ocean, we cannot even catch a drop. And everything that the Prophet said about this man was not just because he's my cousin or my son-in-law. It was because everything, every credit that the Prophet gave to Ali, Ali deserved that he achieved it. He gave credit based on the achievements of this man. So everything that we say is not that we share, we made it up. We just love Imam Ali, we made it up all this hadith, you know. I don't see any problem between Shia and Sunni when it comes to Imam Ali. Is there any Sunni scholar can deny what we say about Imam Ali? Because these are all available. Sunni and Shia scholars, all the books, from the first days that the books were written, these are from the Prophet. We didn't make, make up anything. And we don't say more than what the Prophet said. I mean, the reason that we love this man because we, we read what the Prophet said. We didn't say, Kitab Allah wa itrati ahl bayti. This is the Prophet. And everybody agreed that he said that. That I leave to legacy, the book of Allah and my itra. فَإِنَّهُمَا لَيْ يَفْتَرِغَ حَتَّى يَرِدَ عَلَيْهَا The Prophet said that. Anybody has doubt about that? Did we say Ali Yumma al Haq? Ali Yumma al Quran, wal Quran ma Ali, Ali Yumma al Haq, wal Haq ma Ali. If you want to touch the message of the Quran, learn it from Ali. If you have any doubt, where is the truth? Look at Ali, wherever Ali is, truth is there. Who said that, Prophet? Where is this? In every book. I challenge if anyone can deny that this hadith is not sahih or this hadith is zaif, everybody says that. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he says, خطب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله يوم الجمعة قال أيها الناس أوسيكم بحب أخي وابن عمي علي بن أبي طالب فإنه لا يحبه إلا مؤمن ولا يبغضه إلا منافق ألا ومن أحبه فقد أحبني ومن أبغضه فقد أبغضني this is the statement from the Prophet. That, oh people, I want you to show your love to this man. When you show your love to Ali, you are showing your faith to Allah. And whoever showed hate, hate for Ali means hypocrisy. This is the statement of the Prophet. Again, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal says, قال عمر ibn Shas al-Aslami kharajtu ma aliyin ila al-Yaman. The Prophet sent Imam Ali and myself to Yemen. During this journey, Ali was tough to me and I didn't like it. When we came to Medina, I started complaining that Ali was tough and this and that. After a while, I saw the Prophet and he called me. He said, come here. You hurt me. محال قال بلا من آذى عليا فقد آذاني. He said I heard that you hurt Ali. He said stop for no ya Rasulullah. How can I hurt Ali? I never did. He said yes. You hurt me. He said I never hurt you, Rasulullah. How can I hurt you? He said well you did when you hurt Ali. That means that you hurt me. This Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal is not anybody made it up. So brothers and sisters, when we look at the history, relationship between the Prophet and Muhammad, the baby of Raja, any time that there was a crisis, there was a tragedy, there was a mess, there was a problem, right away the Rasulullah said, Ayna Ali, Ayna Ali, we need Ali to fix this problem. <coughs> Subhanallah. It happened in Khaybar, 
The first one, the second one, everybody goes, come back. No good news. Frustration. قال الله أتينا الراية غدا رجلا يحب الله ورسوله ويحبه الله ورسوله. I'm going to give this standard, this flag tomorrow to the one person that he loves God and the Prophet and God and the Prophet, they loved him. This is a big statement. What else you want for your life if you know that God loves you, that the Prophet loves you? And this happened. يفتح الله على يديه And he went. And do you know the, the rest of the story of what happened in Khayba? Same thing in Khanda. Amr ibn Abdwat. The forest of Arab, everybody is scared his name. A tall man, a strong man, hero of Arab. In Khanda, he crossed the ditch. He crossed the barriers in the, in the Saha, challenging the Prophet and the, the companions. Hadmi Mubarak, Hadmi Mubarak, anybody is there to fight with me. Everybody is silent. What happened to you guys? You said you, if you die, you go to heaven. Don't you want to go to heaven? Come here, I want to send you to heaven. Hadmi Mubarak, Hadmi Mubarak. The Prophet said, who is for Amr? Ana. Ana li Amr, ya Rasulallah. The Prophet said, hada Amr. And he said, law kana Amr, I don't care. He said, okay. At this time, sit down. Second time, Ham bin Mubarak, anybody for Amr? Again, ana lahu ya Rasulallah. Third time, everybody is silent. And the Prophet gave the permission to Imam Ali to go and to, to face the enemy. And when he started walking, everyone heard that the Rasulullah said, Baraza al-Imanu kullu ila shirk kullu. Ali is the manifestation of the entire faith and the Ummah who is facing our enemy. And you know the rest of the story of what happened on that day that and first of all, he, he started joking because Ali was shorter and he was very tall and he was very strong that I don't want to fight with you. I mean, you know, I, I, I heard about you and your father and he said, but I want to fight with you. I want to fight with you. And you know the rest of this story. Another crisis, another tragedy. When that happened to Khalid ibn Walid, and you know the, the, the story of Khalid ibn Walid, that he was assigned for a, a peaceful mission. But then he started killing the people, and now the Billah, he did what he did. And when the Prophet heard, he said, Allahumma, inni bari'um mimma sana'ahu Khalid. Allahumma ni bariyum mimma sanahu. He said it three times, Oh Allah, I have nothing to do with what Khalid did that was sinful. And the Prophet said, We need to fix this. Where is Ali again? This is Imam Ali. He said that those people were innocent, they were not supposed to be killed. You give this diyat and make sure that whatever is Mardat Allah, do exactly that and make their family happy and make sure that they know that Khalid did something wrong and the Prophet is buried. Again, when they are moving and marching toward Mecca, when Sa'd ibn Ubadah he started to say, Al-Yum, Yum al-Malhama, Al-Yum, Yum al-Malhama. Today is the day of blood and day of massacre and day of revenge. The Prophet said, Ayn Ali, Ayn Ali. Come and go and take the, the flag from Sa'd ibn Ubadah and change the slogan, say, Al-Yum, Yum al-Malhama. Ali is a man of rahmah, man of mercy, man of compassion. Even Abu Sufyan said at that time, وَجَدْنَا عَلِيًّا عَلِيَّنَهُمْ وَأَحْسَنَهُمْ 
He is the best one. He is the most moral. He is the more, most human. And years, years back, Hala Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, Amr ibn Abdul Aziz, when he is talking about Amir al Mu'mineen, he said, Ma alimna anna ahadan kana fi hadhi al umma bada al nabiyya azhad min Ali ibn Abi Talib, subhanallah. Oh. This is a huge statement by Omar ibn Abdul Aziz. He is saying that after the Prophet in the entire Ummah, and the listeners they are saying, what about the first Khalif? What about the second Khalif? What about the third Khalif? What about other Zuhad? But he said, no, after the Prophet, we don't have anyone as had. Means more pious, more perfect more devoted to the service of Allah and humanity than Ali ibn Abi Talib. And then when we go to Quran, and as I said, there are hundreds and hundreds of statements by the Holy Prophet that are talking about Amir al-Mumin, Aqluhu wa Ilmuhu wa Butulatuhu wa Jahaduhu wa Ata'uhu wa Sakha'uhu wa Shuja'atuhu wa Wafa'uhu wa Tadhiyatuhu in all these qualities of this man, there are so many ahadith, there are so many ayat. One of them, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَإِنَّ حِزْمَ اللَّهِ هُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ The ahadith is saying that this verse was revealed after Amir al-Mu'min in the masjid, he is doing the prayer, he is fihalat al rukur And there was a poor person came to the masjid and asking for help. And Amir al-Mu'min in ashara, bihadihi. And he took his ring while he is praying and while he is in halat al rukur And he didn't wait till, you know, end his prayer. Right away, he helped the, the person decide. And Allah said, this is, this man, he meant it. There are many people, they may give like thousands of dollars or dirhams or dinars. Doesn't change anything. But one ring, simple ring. The ring of Amir al mumin was not a very expensive one, right? Because Amir al mumin is not the one that does not go to high Zuhair and get like a ring of $5,000 diamond. This is something simple. But what was really important was the sincerity and khulus and purity behind that zakat. And we have to be like that. It's in the Quran, 27 times Allah talks about salat and right away about zakat. We cannot separate zakat and, and salat. Zakat is to do the task here, to purify ourselves and our, our anwar. Zakat is sadaqa. Sadaqa is from sadaq. To show our sadaq and to show our honesty and seriousness about our faith. And Ali proved that. He, he showed that. He wanted to set up an example for us that come to the masjid, do your prayer. But at the same time, pay your charity, pay your zakat. Even if you are doing your prayer, don't forget about that. You are praying and you are connecting with God, but you don't want to cut your connection with the people and especially the poor. Because Imam Ali knows the blessing and the barakah and the khair and the sa'ada and the grace behind sadaqat and zakawat and charity and acts of kindness. فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُهُ وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ Subhanallah, Allah is talking. He's saying when you give something, هُوَ يُخْلِفُهُ He replaces it. Because هُوَ خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ He is the best provider. Does God, نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ ever lie? If Allah says it in the Quran that هُوَ يُخْلِفُهُ 
He is saying it, that don't worry, when you give, I replace it, I give you more blessing, more rahmah, more barakah, more sa'adah, more tool al umr, more than for amrad. So bring barakah and healing and harmony and health and peace and increase the nirma in your life by involvement in charity and zakat and Amir al Mu'mineen was was an example on this. Was an example and we, we brothers and sisters as Shia, we have to shayahu aisha bahahu, we have to be acting like similar to Amir al Mu'mineen. When we celebrate the birth of Imam Ali, we celebrate the truth, we celebrate his struggle, we celebrate his peace, we celebrate his sacrifice, we celebrate his fight for freedom and justice, we celebrate his fight for human rights and human dignity. That he said, إِمَّا أَخُوا لَكَ فِي الدِّينَ أَوْ نَذِيرُ لَكَ فِي الْخَلْقِ أَوْ نَذِيرُ لَكَ فِي الْخَلْقِ Ali was Sautul Adalat in Insania, the voice of justice. Now we have these days all this demonstration in this country in Baltimore and then before that was in Ferguson. And today they said the, this homicide did happen. We as Mu'mineen, as a community of faith, of course we are against riot. We are against doing the wrong thing. Riot is wrong. Looting is wrong. Burning and destroying the public property and buildings is wrong. But unjust killing is wrong too. We honor the police officers who sacrifice in this country to, to protect people. But at the same time we have to Remember that the brutality and ruthlessness of some police officers do damage the image of the police department and security forces in this country and they have to be careful. We are for justice. Even the Pledge of Allegiance, it says one nation under God in this, in divisible with liberty and justice for all. Justice for black, justice for white, justice for Arab, justice for Ajam, justice for everyone. This is the allegiance of this country. This is the constitution of this country. This is what the, the rule of law is about. This is what democracy is about. We don't live in Saudi Arabia. We don't live in the land of prejudice and harassment and racism and discrimination. This is shame. So whether it's police department or any other group or in the media or any community, we all must condemn discrimination, prejudice and harassment and help the police to, to improve this discipline and this education and this understanding, so few people in the police department anywhere won't damage the image of majority of the police that they are doing their job and doing their best to protect the people. We should feel as citizens of this country that when we mention a country like Saudi Arabia, and in reality, the, we are not talking about the Saudi people, uh, but about the, the royal family, the Mulukiya. That's shame to see that this regime is the closest ally to the United States, despite of 9-11, despite of helping ISIS, despite of supporting terrorism with the media and money and military everywhere in the Middle East and in Africa. And despite of this insane war and aggression that they started in Yemen, I heard that 23 medical centers and hospitals in Yemen were tar targeted by the Saudi airplane. 23 people, no light and no electricity, and now food crisis. And 
medicine crisis. And it was amazing, this Iranian pilot that showing that much courage, that despite of facing the jet fighters, try to still land on the, the airport in Sana'a and to provide, this was from Hilal al ahmad from the Red Crescent. It was not a military, it was not even a passenger in carrying medicine and hospital equipment. Then they, they hit the, the bomb, so they divert the, the airplane. The pilot still was resisting. He went and he moved around and for the second time tried to land again. But they came and they did more bombardment and they forced this airplane not to land on the ground. And this all happened, when you, talk, when you sit down and listen to what Malik uh, Salman, King uh, Salman is saying, really you laugh of insanity that these people cannot even say their normal talk. They don't know what they are talking about. But because of this money and because of this oil and because of, they can make so much corruption and so much mischief and bring so much misery. And they destroying and corrupting the Muslim nations, the Muslim country, one after another in Iraq and in Syria and Libya and Afghanistan and, and now in Yemen. And only Allah knows the, the destiny of this Ummah. So we have Amir al muminin the one who sacrificed his life to serve Allah and humanity. But these guys are sacrificing humanity to continue their service to the shaitan and to be Abdul Batin wa Abdul Shahwat wa Abdul Shayateen to, to serve their desire and to serve their selfishness. But, it's not going to last forever, though it's been there for a long, long time. What they did to Ahl Bayt and Nabi that we say in every Salah, both Shia and Sunni, every time we salli, we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And if somebody doesn't say salawat ala ala Muhammad, salatuhu batila, whether Shia or Sunni, everybody say it. But then look what they did to Ali Muhammad from day number one till today. They say it in the Salat. But then they killed Ali Muhammad from Imam Ali to his, his family. But Allah decided and determined to have the generation of the last Prophet Khatam al Anbiya from the soul of Amir al Mu'mineen. This is an honor that every other Prophet. The generation comes from the same prophet. But the generation of Nabi Muhammad came through Amir al muminin and Fatima al-Zahra. Assalamu alayki ya Abu al-Hasan. Assalamu alayki ya Amin Allah fi ardi. Wa hujjatahu ala ibadih. Ashhadu annaka jahadta fi sabiillah haqqa jahadih. Wa amalta bi kitabihi wa attabata sunnata nabiyyih. Hatta da'aka Allah ila jawarih. والسلام عليك يا أبا الحسن والسلام عليك يوم ولدت ويوم استشهدت ويوم تبعث حيا وأقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم وإلى الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.